The most extraordinary place inhabited by humans is 400 kilometers above the Earth. It is the International Space Station, a huge laboratory orbiting the Earth. It weighs 450 tons and is the size of a football field. It cost $150 billion and was built by 16 countries. It's the most expensive and complex structure ever built by man. Huge solar panels power it. Astronauts say the station smells like plastic, metal, and meat. Their job is to conduct scientific experiments in microgravity, sometimes even on themselves. The station is constantly rotating at a speed of 28,000 kilometers per hour. A complete orbit around the Earth takes 90 minutes. They see the sun rise 16 times a day. Once you go there, there is no going back for six months. You can't complain that I am bored here. I can't get along with the people here. My head is spinning, my stomach hurts, and there is no toilet, shower, or stew. It is too late now. Astronauts on the station work 10 hours daily, sleep eight hours, and exercise two hours. If you have a bachelor's degree in natural sciences such as astronomy, mathematics, physics, biology, engineering, and computer science, if you have 1,000 hours of flight experience in a jet plane, and if your mental and physical health allows for long space missions, congratulations, you are eligible for three years of vocational training. If you can complete it successfully, you can become an astronaut. Now, a lot of problems await you. Let me tell you about them. Resupply spacecraft are sent to the space station from Earth, carrying the supplies astronauts need to survive. But this work is a bit costly. So, life in space is a bit like camping. There is no plumbing. Astronauts cannot take a shower. They wipe their bodies with a damp towel. Water recycling is very important on the station. 70% is recycled. The water in the towel, the moisture in the air, sweat, and even urine are reused. So, the coffee on the space station is always made from the same water. The coffee you drank yesterday is back in your cup today, even the urine of your friend from the day before. And you want to drink this recycled water? You don't need a glass. Even if you had a glass, you couldn't put water in it. What you need to do is very simple. Squeeze into the air and enjoy your spherical water thanks to the surface tension. Sleeping in space is another problem. There is no such thing as lying down because there is no place to lie. You can even sleep on the ceiling if you want. Of course, it's up to you where the ceiling is. In space, everywhere is the ceiling or the floor. When you sleep in the station, you better secure your jumpsuit because you don't want to wake up in a completely different spot. Also, the station's air circulation systems must work properly. Otherwise, you can suffocate from the carbon dioxide that collects around your head in an environment without gravity. One of the things astronauts have a hard time adjusting to is microgravity. Astronauts grow approximately three centimeters in height in space. One of the most challenging things for them, especially when first arriving on the station, is the deterioration of their inner ear system. So they are confused about where it is up and where it is down, but after a few days, they get used to it. Getting used to it doesn't solve the problem because the lack of gravity causes serious problems in the human body. Weightlessness disables the bones and the body excretes calcium through urine. Bones and muscles dissolve and the circulatory system deteriorates. That's why they spend two hours a day exercising. It is a very boring and tiring process for most of them, but they have to do it. But there is a problem. In space, objects have no weight, so lifting them is useless. Getting on a treadmill is also useless because you have no weight of your own. For that, you need to attach yourself to the treadmill with taut straps. You need to get on machines like this one, which are designed with special hydraulic systems to lift weights. The astronauts' real ordeal begins when they return to Earth. They experience muscle and circulatory system problems. No matter how much they exercise, even the most minor muscles continue to ache for months due to their long stay in microgravity. Dizziness and nausea can last for weeks. The food eaten in space is nothing like the food eaten on Earth. Most of it is dehydrated food. Thus, they do not spoil for long, and their weight is reduced. 
It makes sense since putting one kilogram of cargo into space costs thousands of dollars. Cleanliness is an issue on the International Space Station, so there is no bread as we know it. There is no place here for any food that would scatter crumbs everywhere. Instead, you can put whatever you want in lavish bread. When you get hungry, you inject some hot water into the specially prepared food package, shake it a little, and after five minutes, your meal is ready. But don't expect the same flavor as on Earth. Since body fluids collect in the head region in space, noses are always blocked, and the sense of smell is almost non-existent. After enjoying your meal, you have to record on the computer what you ate, what you drank, how much you exercised, and how many times you went to the toilet. In short, you have to record everything. Even if you don't, there are cameras everywhere. There are no secrets and no privacy at the station. In space, astronauts can't go to the barber, so they have to shave themselves and master it. They have a special vacuum shaver that sucks all the hair out and prevents it from getting into the equipment. It's the same with nail clipping. You have to pay attention to this if you don't want your fingernails flying around and getting into the mouths of your sleeping friends. Because astronauts can't do enough body cleansing, their sleeping bags and belongings smell a bit. Excreted chemicals from bodies such as methane, ammonia, and ketones soak into things. Since the laundry is not washed, astronauts have to wear the same clothes for a long time. Astronauts arriving at the station for the first time notice the smell, but they get used to it after a while. They may have trouble cleaning themselves, but they are meticulous about cleaning the station. The space station contains sensitive devices, so cleanliness is very important. Saturday mornings are cleaning day on the space station. They have to sweep everywhere with a vacuum cleaner and wipe with germicidal wipes. Again, it is a tedious job. When equipment breaks down outside the space station, astronauts have to spacewalk to fix it. It is one of the most dangerous jobs an astronaut can do. Because one of the millions of pieces of space debris orbiting the Earth can hit you, this junk is 20 times faster than a bullet. Some are the size of a screw, while others are bigger than a football. If a piece of space debris even the size of a screw hits an astronaut, it could be fatal. Of course, this space debris is tracked by satellites, but the smaller ones are almost impossible to track. We created this dump and are now paying for our irresponsible behavior. As you can imagine, the spacewalk is done in a spacesuit. This suit consists of 13 layers and weighs 127 kilograms. It can be worn in 45 minutes. Its value is $12 million. The spacesuit protects the astronaut against space vacuum, cold, radiation, and micrometeorites, and provides oxygen. But all this comes at a price. Astronauts cannot move freely in the spacesuit. Even a simple repair that would take them five minutes on Earth takes hours in space. Going to the toilet on a space station requires unpleasant sounding methods like vacuuming. Otherwise, who wants to have to try to catch all the crap flying through the air? That's why astronauts use a special vacuum funnel shaped nozzle made for the space station for number one. For number two, they must sit on the toilet seat and secure themselves with a belt. Then the vacuum toilet bowl does the job. Don't worry about finding the toilet hole. There is a camera for that. Liquid waste is recycled into drinking water. The solid waste is stored in special tanks to be returned to Earth. No dumping into space. So let's say you went on a spacewalk and it took hours, sometimes even more than 10 hours. Don't worry, there are adult diapers designed for you. You can enjoy wetting yourself against the scenery. There is no running water in space like at home. Each astronaut does their personal cleaning by pouring special shampoos that do not require rinsing onto towels. This is how they clean their whole body. They must be careful that even the tiny amount of water they use doesn't spread around because it can damage electronic devices. I think the best way is to buzz cut your hair like this guy does. That way, you can clean in one motion. By the way, after brushing your teeth, you must swallow the foam. But don't worry, the toothpaste is harmless. No matter how sheltered the space station is, it cannot provide the natural magnetic shielding that our Earth provides. 
That's why astronauts sometimes see flashes when they close their eyes. These flashes indicate that radioactive particles are passing through their eyes. Of course, this radiation affects the whole body, not just the eyes. In six months on the space station, an astronaut is exposed to as much radiation as a nuclear power plant worker is exposed to in a lifetime. Being an astronaut is hard work. Of course, astronauts need leisure and recreation like Earth's people. Like people who work full-time, they take weekends off. In their free time, they watch movies, listen to music, read books, play card games. They often video chat with their families. But the most spectacular activity aboard the space station is undoubtedly watching the spectacular view of the rotating Earth below them from one of the station's many windows. This is Scott Kelly. You've already seen him many times throughout the video. He's a NASA astronaut and an American. And this is Mikhail Kornienko, Russian cosmonaut. They spent a lot of time together, both in training and on the station. Mikhail calls Scott a very good friend and a real professional. And Scott calls Mikhail his brother from a different mother. They both know there is tension between their countries, but they realize that tension means nothing in space. From 400 kilometers up, looking on everything we care about, they say we care too much about the life. Because when you look at the world from above, there are no country borders. I think if we could send our two presidents up for two weeks, problems on Earth would get settled. <laughs>